Holy sh! Hey everyone, it's Jinx here and I'm a Genshin Impact math guy still. So the last video we put out about the new resin math and how you should be investing in your teams is getting a good amount of attention and while discussing with Tuner off air, there were a few things we didn't mention in the last video I feel is important to mention. Speaking of Tuner, don't forget to check him out over at twitch.tv slash Tuner. I do hang out in voice chat with him fairly often, several times a week, and it is a good place to get all of this kind of newer information and things we're thinking about. So the main thing that we want to talk about in today's video that wasn't included in the last video is that there is still a strong argument for investing in supports and not hyper investing in your carry. The difference between the two is flexibility versus raw power. See, the previous video was talking about what the most resin efficient way to maximize a team's damage is, but that's the caveat, it's a team. The power of investing in your carry first and foremost, getting them to Ascension 5, Ascension 6, maxing out their talents, is that you squeeze the most DPS out of your resin for that one carry. However, the weakness of that is the power is locked into that one carry and their teams. Carries by their very nature are less flexible than supports. The Luke teams are locked into either running the Luke Vape, the Luke Overload slash Turbo, and the Luke Pure Pyro teams. And the only situation where hyper investing is the most efficient is in a Luke Vape team because that's the scenario where he's dealing enough of his team's DPS to warrant that hyper investment. No matter what, if you want to make use of your investment into power on the Luke, you have to build a Luke team that utilizes him as a high field time carry. Remember that your carries are only meant to be hyper invested for resin efficiency because they make up such a large percentage of your team's DPS. If you put them into a swap team or if you use them instead as a burst damage support, suddenly their percent of the team's DPS drops and their hyper investment is now less resin efficient than spreading investment among other units. To repeat, hyper investment into a carry is only the most resin efficient way to build your team's damage if they are the carry and dealing the majority of a team's damage. This means if you want to make the most use of your resin investments, you have to be running these teams where these hyper invested carries are the star. And this is where we we can run into issues because sometimes they just don't content match well. If you have a hyper invested Deluke and then suddenly you have to be fighting Pyro Whopper Flowers or Pyro Regis Vines or anything that is heavily Pyro resistant, suddenly he struggles a lot more than previously. You can make this up by running something like a 4vv support who can shred off some pyro resistance, although in vape teams it's very difficult to keep pyro consistently shredded. Like if you run sucrose in a vape team, it's fairly difficult to keep a pyro aura on the enemy because the reason the vape team works is because Jingcho is applying hydro aura, and he is applying it very well. We can see this especially in the current abyss with one of the more common 4 star carry units in the game, Razor. As we mentioned in the previous video, Razor is considered a hyper carry so you should be hyper investing in him if you want to maximize his team's damages. And with constellations, he does start competing with Deluke Vape in terms of his personal output. At least if Deluke is C0, which is likely. However, the current floor 12, 3 have heavily physically resistant enemies. This leads to a situation where Razor just suddenly really struggles to clear this content as fast as you want him to clear it because they're all very resistant to his damage type. Now, you can do something like run a Cryo Razor with a Chongyun support, but you are giving up a very valuable support slot in order to do that. The reality is, is that Razor teams have struggled a lot more here. Running a physical Razor team with very strong burst damage supports on his side, it can be a struggle to even just get a 1 minute 30 clear on the current 12-3-1 with my Razor teams. However, when I put the same level of investment into a Deluke team, a Hu Tao team, a Chao Zhang Ling team, even something like Kentucky Fried Turbo or a Bay Turbo team, which are purely 4-star teams, I'm clearing in 40 to 45 seconds for this first half average with some of my teams being able to push 35 seconds. And my Razor teams in the previous Abyss were able to compete with around those same kind of clear times with my other teams, it's just that there's a horrible mismatch of content to Razor right now. Again, the trade-off for the more resin efficient power of hyper investing in your carries is the loss of team flexibilities. You can run different supports with Razor to try to compensate for some of this, but the reality is, is Razor just doesn't match the current content very well. Now, losing flexibility is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is an issue we did not mention in the previous videos. Carries are not very transferable. Even with units like Hu Tao, Ganyu, and Child, where they can function fairly well as burst damage supports that spam 
not amped ultimates, a team using them as a hyper investor support will likely be performing worse than the same team with more spread out investments. If we instead look at putting this investment into support units, the older recommendations of investing in units more evenly, we trade off power of a specific composition for flexibility. If instead of bringing our Deluke to Ascension 6 from Ascension 5, we bring Jing Chou to Ascension 5 from Ascension 4, suddenly we have an investor Jing Chou that we can put into a Gan Yu team, or a Zhang Ling team, or a Child team, or a Razor team, or a Kuching team, or a Klee team, or a Zhao team, or a Gaia Freeze team, or even just a swap team like Kentucky Fried Turbo that I've talked about on Twitter. We're trading the power of specifically our Deluke Vape team for more power in any comp we choose to run Jing Chou in. Jing Chou and Fischl fit into basically any team. Zhang Ling fits into a lot of teams while also having the flexibility to be a carry option, and Investor Zhongli is universally strong post buffs, Alfredo is a Geo Fischl that fits into basically any team, etc, etc. So yes, hyper investing in your carries is the best way to eke out damage from the specific teams, but you are trading off flexibility for that. Like mentioned before, if endgame content switches over to a hyper invested Deluke team having to fight against like pyro whopper flowers or something very pyro resistant, but with a more invested Jing Cho, you can transfer him over to a Kaya Freeze team and clear that content with a lot more ease than Deluke trying to brute force past a 50% pyro resistance. It also means that when your carry gets outplaced by a new one, their supports can be transferred over, but their investment cannot. We can clearly see this with Hu Tao. If you are willing to manage all of her caveats, like I enjoy doing because I find her very fun to play and I enjoy the logistics of managing those, then simply put, Hu Tao is outperforming the Luke when they're both at C0. In fact, a high constellation Xiang Ling outperforms Luke at C0 in the same teams, but that's a totally different topic for a future video I won't be putting out at some point. Also, a thing I failed to mention about Hu Tao in the previous Hu Tao videos is that when we were comparing Hu Tao versus Deluke and other contemporary carries, we were only comparing Vape Tao. However, Hu Tao gets to run melt teams that let her melt about 33-50% to of her normally vapable hits, which spikes her single target DPS ahead even further, with caveats. And if, like me, you are willing to play around all of Hu Tao's caveats, your Hu Tao simply outperforms the Luke, and I personally have no reason to play the Luke anymore other than testing. I clear about 10 to 20 percent faster than my Luke teams with Hu Tao when both use four star weapons. On top of that, Hu Tao gets around 20 percent more damage gain with Homer than the Luke does with Wolf Gravestone. At least for my particular Hu Tao and the Luke, don't take that as an absolute value. So if I use five star weapons on both, she pulls even further ahead. I enjoy her playstyle a lot more personally, and she runs basically the same teams or even better teams because she has access to melt than Deluke can. However, please keep in mind I'm not saying Hu Tao is always better than Deluke. Remember that one of her caveats is you have to be able to clear content into rotations so she doesn't desync with the supports. If my teams were weaker and I needed three or four rotations, Deluke would start pulling ahead of my Hu Tao. Again, I want to stress because I'm willing to manage the caveats and because my particular Hu Tao is strong enough to clear in two rotations, she is ahead of my Deluke. And now, because my Hu Tao is outperforming my Deluke, I just don't really have a reason to play him. However, my investment into Jing Chou still gets to be useful because he's on my Hu Tao teams and my Gan Yu teams, etc, etc. This is largely why, even though the previous video recommends investing into hyper carries to Ascension 6, all of mine are still at Ascension 5. Having more equivalent investments lets me test a lot more team comps on more equal footing of power level. Plus, if I want to simulate a hyper invested carry, I can can just run better artifact sets or I can run worse artifact sets on my other units to simulate a lower investment. This argument for flexibility versus specific team comp power is also applicable to artifacts. Investing resin into leveling the talents for a specific unit is guaranteed power. They will always get that 7% or so damage increase per talent level. On the other hand, artifact substat rolls are random and may take a short or long time to equal that 7% damage gain. However, artifacts are transformed. Transferable. My cracked Deluke Witch 4 set has such good EM and crit substats that my Ascension 5 Deluke hits about as hard as an average Ascension 6 Deluke with normal gear. And that set can and now does comfortably live on my Hu Tao. It can also live on my Zhang Ling when I run Zhang Ling based team comps like Chao Teens or Kotaki Fried Turbo. It could live on my Bennett if I choose to run a Bennett carry team. It could even live on my Klee if I ever decided to unbench her, which is probably never happening. Artifacts do add more gotcha to your power increase 
increases, but the trade-off for that RNG power gains is that you get the flexibility to use those power gains on any unit that can use the pieces. And lots of units can simply run offset pieces that just give them the best substat lines. In fact, very few units actually want to run four-set bonuses over just what gives them the best substats. In fact, my Razor's calculated best set is actually a two-piece witch set. No gladiators, no bloodstained chivalry. Now, this is not to say you shouldn't run gladiators or bloodstained chivalry. They're both fantastic set bonuses for Razor, but in my particular case, my pieces are not good enough to make up the substat difference of running just random pieces. At the end of the day, you have to pick how you want to play and how you want to invest your resin. It's up to you whether the power of one team comp versus the flexibility of teams you can run is more important to you. But we did think this was a very important point to clarify because we never went into it in the previous video. Yes, hyper investing in your carry does lead to better DPS on their teams versus spreading out your investment, but you do trade out flexibility for that. Which is something to consider and something you have to make your own judgement call on. We aren't telling you how to play the game, always play the game how you like and have fun with it, but we are giving you the pros and cons of your options. Alright, that's it for this video, fairly short topic, just wanted to make sure we covered it. And of course, Monster Hunter Rise is coming out on Friday, so I will be doing not only Genshin content, but Monster Hunter Rise content as well. Still trying to figure out how I'm going to balance that exactly, might try to do one-to-one -one video of each every week or something. Might have to do more of these less scripted, easy to produce videos like this one, just so that we can get some videos out of the way for Genshin as well. But regardless, thank you so much for checking out the video as always. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video, leave a comment below, and share it with your friends. All of these are just the best way you can help support us completely for free. And again, don't forget to tune in to the stream live on Twitch almost every single day. It's just a great place to get some daily interaction with us. Be sure to also check out our Twitters. The Adjinx Mathlos is my personal account where I post all the various stuff I'm working on currently, and the Jinx Tuna account is going to be the company account run by Tuner. Don't forget we do have our Discord server, the Mathlos Nest, really cool community. I expect there to be quite a big uptick in Monster Hunter Rise talking in there once we actually get around to covering that. But regardless, also a great place to talk about Genshin. And of course, none of this will be possible without the generosity of our patrons. I do say this every video, and y'all know I'm gonna say it every single video, y'all the best. Alright, that's it for this fairly short video. And we do have a lot more Genshin as well as Monster Hunter Rise content on the way, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell because if you hit the notification bell YouTube lets you know as soon as new videos come out. Alright, happy waifu hunting whalers, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!